if I played this game last year, I think Hades would definitely have been... I don't know if it would have been game of the year, but it definitely would have been in the contender. For Hello sure. and welcome. My name is Alex Gonzalez, OCJ. It's my good old friend, J.E. Hey, that's me. And please remember that we are not game devs. How are you doing today, Jay? I just want to play more Hades, if I'm going to be honest. Like, I'm thinking about it right now, and I'm like, oh, man, I just... Last night was terrible, where, like, I just had the worst runs back to back to back to back. Just, like, the ter most terrible runs I've ever had of my life, uh, which ended with me finally beating Theseus and the Mintar. But, you know, in roguelites, when, like, you just you're just getting bad runs, just bad perks dropping. Mm -hmm. And you're just like, I'm not having any fun because these perks suck. And But I want to have a good time. And so I'm going to do another run. Bad perks. I'm going to do one more bad perks. All right. One last you, but that's one. How, that's what Nectar does. Where all of a sudden you choose the gods that show up. Yeah, yeah. Uh, which I've gotten to that point. But it doesn't seem to work. Sometimes I put in the keepsake and I'm like, I want to meet Artemis next. It gives me fucking Zeus or something. And I'm like, why doesn't uh, it work? Uh, but those are not the boons we are talking about today. Today we are creating something new. Every week, We Are Not Game Devs will create a new, exciting video game idea that we have always wanted to play, but do not have any knowledge or know how to create the wonderful experience at our video games. And today is my turn to present to We Are Not Game Devs 168th IP. And we're going to begin with this concept. <clears throat> You're going to be a warrior that has three weapons. And these weapons are gonna be a spoon, a fork, and a knife. And it's gonna be an open world game where it's gonna be similar to um, that one launch game that came out for PS5. Forgot what it's called now. I wanna say Uncrustables, but that's not it. The Muppet game with a strawberry. Oh, not bug snacks. But uh, similar to Bug Snacks, only in the sense that I want this to be more Japanese styled. Not Japanese styled, I guess like anime styled, where there's a bunch of roaming food. And then you're a food warrior that must conquer it. And you do that by um, using your fork, knife, and spoon. And then um, once, once it's down, you can eat it and gain its strength and get experience. And then I also want you to meet other food warriors that also have different utensils. Like the chopstick person. Yeah, like the dual wielding the chopstick person. And carving fork and uh -huh. shit like that. Or, yeah, um, or a guy who uses skewers for like marshmallows. The hibachi steak guy with like the, the spatula yeah, and so the knife thing. That's where it's going to be anime style where there's going to be a bunch of different ones. And then you can even select some to be in your party for support. Um, actions and i think it would be a really dope game what do you think here let's fill this okay. out i don't think they should sometimes be i think they all should be able to be recruited a la like fallout or skyrim type yeah. of thing where they're like random npcs throughout the world and if you do certain criteria maybe do a side quest some of them do a fetch quest some of them bring them an item you could bring them onto your party and then switch them out at your base or whatever, your mm -hmm, your, your mm -hmm. kitchen of some sort, right? Um, I also see this game as kind of like a fantasy, kind of like fantasy-esque, where like this is just the world, kind of like think Torito or whatever, where it's like this is the world and this is yeah. just how life is. And there are these food warriors that go out to hunt food to bring back to their town to sell their their wares and finds or whatnot uh the hunt of the day or the catch of the day or whatever and there can be other um, people just like a regular world where they're fishing for food yeah animals and um, like smaller animals like let's yeah. say like the beginner animal that's in the tutorial for you to kill is like uh like a pig or something and that's like mm -hmm. what most regular people would hunt but you're out there hunting like crazier stuff like i don't know how crazy we're gonna get with the the enemy types do you want this to be like bug snacks where you're seeing like in the wild, no i want like, it to be almost like final fantasy 13 where it's huge like creatures or final fantasy 15 mm, where mm. but um not that you're driving around <clears throat> i wonder how you're gonna be able to move fast i think there should be mounts of other food 
Well, what I was asking is, do you want these monsters you're fighting to be kind of like food based or yeah. more like Torito, where it's going to be like. They're just a regular monster, but no, nah, I want them to be like... food based. That way, okay. the fork, knife and spoon weapons make sense. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I get it. So they're just really big pun mm -hmm. versions of bug snacks. Type of yeah, thing. and I want you to be able to use, if you can venture with me further, magic. But instead of magic, you're using sauces and marinades and dips to attack them. I'm fine with that. I'm fine with that. I, I mean, so far, I'm really digging the feel of this game. I, I do want it to feel like gameplay wise and like scope wise i kind of want it to be on the same level of like a like a breath of the wild if you know what i mean mm -hmm. where it's this is going to be a pretty big game I actually how i want it to feel for my own personal reasons i want the game play an open world to feel like a suikoden or like a my favorite uh skies of arcadia legends where you have a home base and this is your restaurant maybe and this is where you have you go back to your home base just to pick up side quests talk to your npc like people that you hire throughout the game and throughout the story and you just go back there to like talk hang out chill maybe upgrade your character upgrade like maybe a mount of some sort upgrade like other aspects upgrade the town even and just your actual restaurant and it's just kind of like your base of operations and then from there you venture out into other lands via fast travel or on foot um and you go hunting for monsters and whatnot uh i do like the idea of every time you kill a monster maybe there's like Red Dead 2 esque, where you could choose to harvest it or eat it right then and there. And if you mm -hmm. eat it right then and there, it gives you like benefits to keep going further into the lands uh, as you explore. Uh, Move set wise, I think I think it should feel very smooth, and we shouldn't limit you to just one weapon type at a time. I think each no, weapon has. I want a you. Purpose. I kind of want to do this. If you could let me do, do this, where I want it to be a fork, knife, and spoon class, but then you can go from there. For instance, you could use spoon and you could have like a baby spoon and those maybe you can throw at people, right? Mm -hmm. And there's like a bunch of them. Or you can use a ladle and that's like a heavy weapon, but still mm -hmm. a spoon. And all spoons will have like kind of certain common characteristics. Yeah. Where depending on what... um you're fighting on maybe you can shovel dirt or you can dig or it does certain kinds of damage just like with forks i would want it to be that way too yeah i think i was going with the same idea but different archetypes for each weapon type um but the way i was thinking about it is let's say the knife would be your typical square light attack mm -hmm. where you're it's just just like a giant sword type of thing I thought the spoon would be more of like a defensive weapon where you're, it, you use it as like a shield and like... Oh, that'd be that cool. Kind of stuff. Yeah. And, then and maybe fork. you can even use perfect parry where like if you, you can redirect attacks using the spoon. Yeah. And I also see it as like a big area of effect, like AOE, like melee swinging mm -hmm. weapon as well because of the big fat end. It'll be know? like scoop. Yeah, whereas the fork I see as your main projectile weapon. Um, oh, yeah. The one it's that it's like a spear. Throwing. Yeah, like as a spear. Um, and also, like, maybe as a longer spear, like, far distance type of weapon. Like a, and yeah. the way that I see it is knife is tied to your square button. The fork is tied to your L2, R2 button. So hold L2 to aim down sights and then press R2 to throw or maybe another button to just jab it if you don't want to throw the fork for whatever reason. And then the spoon could be like, I don't know, R1 or maybe even triangle in, in, in some instances. And I think throughout your travels, you will find different spoons, knives, and forks, and each of them will 
feel a little bit different, but like you said, have the essence of that weapon type. Like spoons will always be kind of bigger AOE defensive attacks. Knives will be mainly melee DPS and force will be your ranged DPS, but they'll all have different effects. Like you could find like a carving fork and that will be super fast and could do piercing damage that goes mm-hmm. through monsters and stuff. But then you could also find like your regular salad fork, which you like start off with and that does basic damage. And then like a flaming type of fork or something. I don't know what it would be, but that has like fire damage and stuff like that. Or we can do like a pasta fork that has like piercing because it like twists when you throw it. Yeah. Or like maybe it's heat seeking or like enemy seeking cool. like it travels throughout the air type of thing um what if you could have something no those don't exist i was thinking about there will be a guy who can throw like that you know the utensils that plug into corn on the cob so you can eat it without touching it mm, some dude will have like, those kind of like a skewer type of thing mm-hmm. yeah um, so that's where i think it's cool and we can even inject magic users quote unquote and those are the people who use sauces and stuff to break down meat for instance like with fish they can do ceviche where they use like lime juice and other stuff almost like poisons and whatnot and then it cooks it yeah i i kind of see the marinade and the 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 sauces and stuff like that kind of working like the oils from the witcher Mm -hmm. a little bit more Obviously, there'd be some that are more like active, like that would work like grenades. But I think some would be more like an ointment that you put onto things. Um, maybe it would be tied to your L or your R one or your L one. Okay, no, no, or something. the magic. I remember what I what my original idea was. Is you would still have fire, you would have heat and cool, and then I think. Um, yeah, I think you'd only have two heat and cool, and you would be able to do branching Hot things off of branch. that. Yeah, so it would be like heat could eventually get into boil. That can eventually get into um, like how cool you can get into flash freeze, get into um, just certain moves that you can do, blanch and stuff, and then those would do damage, and they'd be magical based attacks. Are you saying like magic, like for like the heat? Not magic, whatever? but like what would magic serve in an RPG? But it wouldn't be that. It would be almost like cooking right. techniques that act as a magical spell to do damage on these monsters. You, so food. you don't. So would it be like a hot sauce type of fireball where you're throwing hot sauce at someone, or is it like you're putting it on your weapon and they'll make your and weapon and it'll heat it? Based? Yeah, or both. Yeah, I'd say both. Because I okay. think it'd be cool to use like a flash freeze and then it um, makes it slower. And then yeah. you can even um, have cool on your weapons. So you have cool weapons and go from there. Yeah. Okay. I like the idea of, yeah, maybe there being like a sauce uh, weapon tempering or whatever, like tempering your weapons with sauces. But mm-hmm. then there's also ways to turn your sauce into like, throwables consumable throwables or whatever and then that would be like your it would work kind of like grenade but it would be our form of magic and then we could like animate it so it looks more like magic and not so much like grenades and i want beverages to serve as healing items but they're also little characters that are cute so you're drinking almost like fairy like beverages that heal you so Mm. there's like pop boba like milk tea and they have like faces and shit on them. Yeah. And like you catch them in the wild and that's what you drink to um, restore health and mana. Sure. I'm fine with that. Um... So maybe the way I'd want it is I'd want it to be like a flask that has a certain amount of charges. And then you find a pond of wherever these like little globules of like cute little drinks are. And you catch like eight of them. And then those are like your uh, HP restore. Yeah, so you can find like a kind soda of like pop Legend fountain. of Zelda fairies. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm totally fine with that, and I think that is a fun way to keep like cuteness in the game. And I think this whole game is gonna be pretty cute 
in general, it's going to look very colorful, very bright. Like yes. in my head, this game definitely looks like a Breath of the Wild or like a Monster Hunter Stories or like a yeah, very vibrant, very colorful. The exactly. world I want it to be full. Um, um, I want there to be also like all the little things should be cute. So like if a vendor's cooking bacon, like instead of the bacon sizzling, the bacon's like dancing on the pan. Like I want it to feel like a very um, you don't you want world. It, you want it to look more child friendly rather than when you're cooking up the the butt of a pork it's screaming it's fucking hard out because you're just boiling this thing alive or like no it yeah so it's it what happens is i almost want it to be so cute that like when you cook food it ends up like it, it, it's nothing and then as you cook it all of a sudden it slowly grows a face and then becomes born as this cute little thing if it's small but if it's yeah. like a huge thing like um like maybe like a huge hot fudge sundae that would be like a monster when it becomes that big it's crazy but if it's like some small ingredient like for instance another cute one would be a crouton what if i see i hope you see where i'm going with this but i think this is gonna be fun it'll be like a cool 3d open world game um and do you want there to what I was going to say, is, do you want to fight other humans too? I think that would be fun to fight other food warriors. I think those would be like unique side quests that you don't have to do. Yeah, sure. I think if we add them as side quests, maybe like in your base of operations and rivals and such. Yeah, like it, it would be a cool small side thing you can do, but I don't want it to be like super major. Maybe one no. duel in the story mode against like your the rival head chef of another restaurant in your hometown or something like that. Yeah. Um, the main story mode would be you trying to become the best food warrior. And then you would also learn techniques on the way, like heating, cooling different fork and spoon techniques. But then there'll be side quests that teach you additional techniques on top of that, or yeah. would give you different variations of weapons or would send you against unique like fighters. Like maybe there's one that's like a unique food hunter who wants you to join up and then you eventually get his partnership. Another person who uh, challenges other food people to different competitions. That's, that's all I'm looking for. Yeah. In terms of these small living food stuff, I, I feel like what it would actually end up being like is turning your food alive is a special process that, add some benefit to the game like if instead of wanting to eat it you could like cook it in a special way that will give life to your food maybe if you and, if you cook with like the right amount of technique and like a special talent you can give life to the food which gives very various nutrient properties i think it'd be kind of like maybe like a magic spice or something that gives life to the food and, and Rich people I, 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 don't have fridges, but they have like little mini houses, like apartment complexes <laughs> where the food lives, chilled. Yeah. I also think that for the living food, they'll serve some benefit other than just, you know, regular cooked food. Mm -hmm. um, and maybe it is like more of a, like in, in video game speak, it'd be like making food with at, at high quality mm -hmm. or whatnot. But I think it'd be more beneficial than just extra benefits. It'd be some other stuff as well. I just don't know what it would be. Uh, but I don't think it's going to be super common, at least at the start of the game, except for the drinks. I like the idea of drinks becoming becoming alive just in general. And maybe the spices derived from where drinks are are found like you you can't you could only get this magical spice near uh springs mm -hmm. in the lore of the game like near the boba spring there's a tree that grows that has the spice or whatever um but where i do want to go next with this uh game is the idea that the the whole uh what am i trying to say like the just like the main gameplay loop i think would be you going 
of course, there's the whole open world and side quest in between. But I think that like the main story that you're doing is going from town to town, kind of challenging the head restaurant and the head chef of each town and then getting their kind of like Pokemon. And you get yeah. like their special move or their special weapon and you move from town to town until you go to like the the main food competition in the capital city and then that would be kind of like the elite four type of situation i like it and that would be like a summit quote unquote yeah where they all gather perfect and another addition i feel like would be necessary to this game of course would be a pretty in-depth cooking mechanic where cooking is maybe how you make the majority of your magics your potions your consumables and it's like a very in-depth look or it, it's like a big part of the game that we flesh out and like um make very make it very fun to do maybe a little mini game while you're cooking or something i don't know no for sure for sure i like that so I think we have kind of this world fleshed out here, day-night cycles. I think that would be hot and cold food and then different food in between, depending on the environments. I think desert will have like hot, like spicy food and cheesy food. Yeah. I just had an idea. What if like the cooking mechanic game portion of it would be like your restaurant asking for very special commissions you going out looking for very specific types of food bring back to the restaurant and then you cook it up and then like serve it in your restaurant and maybe there's like a small very small like diner dash kind of mini game for your restaurant where you could manage your restaurant manually if you would like you can set it to automatic and it just runs itself but if you'd like to gain extra benefits or currency yeah, money maybe different currency. weapons and stuff like that you could physically manually work this mini game in the game and it's kind of like a restaurant or a diner dash or like a like a you know those cooking games I, or restaurant management games i don't know what they're all called diner dash is the big one that comes to mind overcooked mm -hmm. yeah um, overcooked so another like one that type of stuff taco master i think is what it's called on vita where you like build <laughs> Your or Diner Dash. I don't know. I don't know how else to explain it. No, I get you. Cooking Mama. Yeah, yeah, to a certain extent as well. Yeah. All right. What type of music are we hearing? I just think we just create a generic video game soundtrack. I, I don't. <laughs> I don't know. What <laughs> a generic video game soundtrack. So like. Are you talking about like orchestral and then maybe there's lots of like noises from the different foods also that are making noises and it's not going to be like Pokemon yeah, or I, I mean Buck Snacks where it's like strawberry. No, it'll, right. they'll make, they'll be making their own noises. Right. Like I don't want to rip off Pokemon and Buck Snacks too much, but I definitely think all the monsters and stuff will have like specific grunts and sounds that they make maybe we'll star wars it where we'll just combine weird noises and put effects on them to make unique sounding noises um orchestral is fine with me in my head the soundtrack kind of sounds like genshin impact which you didn't play but it was just a video game soundtrack like the music wasn't bad but it wasn't memorable it was just there video game music yeah mm -hmm. it, it's this orchestraic soundtrack that just plays and if you're in the asian looking area it sounds a little asian inspired yeah that's all i the want the fantasy style area it looks sounds a little bit more like fantasy music you know um, yeah we don't want it to get in the way of the food exactly okay this is going to be a 60 dollar game seven seventy yeah 70 next gen look very nice Ooh, maybe you can use that um next gen vibration so you can feel your um Utensils sinking into the food. Would you want haptic feedback that prevalent where like some mini games maybe based off of haptic feedback? Like yeah, why haptic not? feedback sensitive uh, cues? Because if we do that, then it's PlayStation exclusive. Like this will only be... This feels like a PlayStation. PlayStation exclusive. What do you think? It definitely doesn't feel like an Xbox game. That's for sure. Right, right. 
All right. Get your timer out, because we're going to name this game. And you know, go. You know what would have been the perfect name? What's that? Food Wars. That would have been the perfect name, but <laughs> alas, it's, it's not. Unless we make this Food Wars the game. No. The fantasy world before Food Wars. Food Cross Battle. Uh oh man, this is the most fucking mobile ass game title I ever thought of. But like Gourmet World. Gourmet World. Um Hmm. The 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 land of what's the word I'm looking for? Not prosperity, but there's like a word that means like a lot of food, not gluttony. Land of hmm. I don't know. Huh. Something the, with warriors, maybe something The Rise of the Culinary Warrior. Culinary Knight? Culinary Knight. Culinary Knight. Or should we say Knights of the Dinner Table? Knights of the Kitchen. Kitchen Knights. The the Kitchen, the Knights, Knights of, of the, the Kitchen. Knights of the Dinner Table didn't work for you? Knights of the Dinner Table? It's like Knights Kn of the Round Table. Yeah, I, I, I understood the reference. I, I, I got it. <laughs> Okay. Knights of the uh, Diner. Knight at the diner, but like knight like a like a like a suit of armor knight, like knight at the diner. Yeah, I got that reference like, too. Like like knight of the museum. <laughs> a knight in gourmet, but actual gourmet night, night. like nighttime. Gourmet warriors, warriors gourmet. I don't really like the word warriors for this particular world because okay. warriors makes me think of like, like dynasty warriors, yeah, like right. Asian like fighters. I like the idea of knight. Like, okay, knight. It gourmet. changes the vision of the game for me, but I like the idea of all the food warriors looking like kind of like knights, kind of like how Kingdom Hearts armor works, where it kind of looks medieval but it kind of doesn't at the same time yes. what was the last uh suggestion you just gave i think i like that one knight's gourmet knight's gourmet i like gourmet knight let's just stick with the gourmet knight okay gourmet knight three minutes is an open world food battle rpg adventure game that's bullshit these, <laughs> these descriptions are bullshit where you the main i'm gonna, I'm gonna give you the loop the loop is you play as a knight who uses a spoon, fork, and a knife, which are all different weapons, and you must conquer this open world with RPG aspects where you adventure, take quests, take down huge meals, which are monsters that roam using your utensils, and you can use different utensils and different fighting styles. All right. So I think we have a game here, Jay. What do you think? Would this be a game that you'd want to play, and is it fun? Yeah, I mean, I love me a good open world action. What else did you say? <laughs> open world action. <laughs> action RPG. RPG. <laughs> uh, video game. Like I like, I like a big open world with a unique aspect to it. And I've played a lot of them. So I think I'd give this a shot as well and see if it grabs me in the first 10 hours or so. Yeah, same here. I would play a lot of it. It'd be funny to see the armor. We never talked about that. Like instead of shoulder pads, it's like bulls. Do you want it to be kind of monster hunter-y where like you could like collect Hell yeah. parts of animals that you kill and then start turning them into uh, armors mm -hmm. and weapons? And have, Instead like, of it being like, um, what's it called? Dragon glass. It's um, soy sauce imbued. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, no, I, I would definitely uh, play this game and give a pretty decent shot, I would say. How about yourself? Oh, yeah, I'd be into this game from day one. It'd be tons of fun. Um, 
I don't know if I'd you'd have to hype me up at E3 and then keep the hype going with good trailers to get me to for this game to stay on my radar. Otherwise, I would hope that it'd be a PSN game. Now that we have this complete game, what game studio would you assign to be able to make Gourmet Night the best? So I've had a name rumbling in my head pretty early on. And I think that they are definitely, if not the obvious choice. And it is Sega. I think they would be able to hit the art style we're looking for perfectly. They have... When they do weird ideas, they they go all out. When they have a brand new IP, I think they like to give it mm-hmm. all that they have to make sure that this new IP is at least their vision, if you know what I mean. Mm-hmm. Like they, They'll try things that are off the wall, and most of the time they don't stick. But when they do, it's usually a pretty good game that they created. Um, but I, I don't know. I think Sega has that weird Japanese style to it, but then they also have a lot of games under their pedigree that can build up to a bigger open world game like this. And I don't know. I think Sega would do something very cool. In the, they seem the biggest and greatest match for this game. What about platinum games? becomes very action-y all of a sudden, much less RPG-like. Yeah, that's true. That's true. What about Atlas? More RPG-like, less (laughs) action-y. What's the balance Uh, in between? I think maybe like a Square Enix could do something pretty cool with it. Um, Give it to one of their more crazier, wackier teams that likes to experiment more not so much of super rigid team like a final fantasy would be but give it like a final fantasy director like someone from the final fantasy team and mix them with up with like um i don't know square enix produces some pretty weird wacky crazy ideas every once in a while i can't think of any games right now what about obsidian entertainment they made south park the stick of truth fallout new vegas So I was actually thinking Obsidian as well because I think this game takes a lot from uh, Skyrim and Fallout and games like that. And I know Mm -hmm. that's Bethesda, but, you know, Obsidian, Bethesda, they have very, very similar styles. Um, And yeah, I think Obsidian would do very well. It's just we would have to, you know, because I do want this to feel more light colorful and cartoony where obsidian that's not really their jam but we could definitely get it to be their jam and especially Mm -hmm. since Mm -hmm. outer worlds which was a much more colorful game than like fallout new vegas i think they could be convinced i think so too i think it would be a wonderful addition to their catalog and with that Our 168th IP has gone gold. We hope you look forward to this experience that will probably never release. You can write to appoundgames at gmail.com if you have anything to patch into the game we just created. Also, give us feedback. We are still learning how to make this show better, and your feedback really helps. We have a Patreon. If you'd like to back our ideas, please head over to patreon.com slash wearenotgamedevs. Patrons receive episodes two days early and an extra podcast at the beginning, which you got the tail end of our conversation at the beginning of this episode. That's Patreon. That's patreon.com slash we are not game devs. If you liked our show, why not subscribe and give us all the stars on Apple Podcasts, Google Play Store, Spotify, YouTube, and more. And if they ask for a review, instead of reviewing our show, become your inner game critic and review Gourmet Night. The video game we just created. Thank you for joining us today. We'll be back next Friday with another new IP. Again, my name is Alex Gonzalez. And I'm Jay Yi. Thank you, and please remember that we are not game devs. This one you might got to get in the bag. In the bag. The takeout bag. Because of Gourmet Night. Should we Coming. have, like, um... 
oh, I don't know how we would ever implement this, but now that you say takeout bag and that, I think of like kids meals and they come with like a little toy. <laughs> would be the kids meal equivalent in gourmet night? Um, I think it would be funny if we made like kids meals. Like the kids meals are actually little gangs of like kid food that like play pranks on you. Like the four, like the four chicken nuggets are like little kids, and then the six chicken nuggets are like the teenagers. And then there's like the ten piece, and you have to watch out because they're gangs of chicken nuggets that will sneak up on you. Just like in the wild, like <laughs> yeah, it's like a gang of like. like it would be like you you'd have to fight like a tiny little a miniature burger, and what's his sides? They're not fries; they're apple slices. Yep. And they hang out with little living bottle of chocolate milk. Right. And the chocolate milk. Maybe that's what makes it bad. It becomes chocolatey. And then there'd be <laughs> variants. The strawberry milk and the vanilla milk. I don't know whoever gets vanilla. Do you like vanilla milk? I don't think I've had vanilla milk. It's all right. 